<laughs> we warmed up. We are warmed up. We've been telling stories back in the green room because that was practically warm. I just want to say publicly how much I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Back at you. So um, there's a lot of folks here that know you. If, if you have uh, been to a lecture of Joy DeGruy, if you've been to a workshop, clap for us. So you can. If this is the first time that you have the pleasure of sitting in her presence, could you clap for us, please? <laughs> so I'm a researcher. That was my assessment <laughs> of how I'm going to go with the evening. Okay? So post-traumatic slave syndrome. Tell us about where did you get the energy and the, the, the wherewithal to come up with a theory such as uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome. Because uh, a lot of folks, this is their first time. So sure, I, I realize that when another clapping happened. Um, and anyone in the audience that's familiar with my work know how difficult this is <laughs> to actually explain it. Um, actually, it started with lived experience. Uh, before I went to school, before I did the research for the book, way before all of that, it started growing up in the skin. And what I mean by that is, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles, South Central, graduated from Crenshaw High School. Woo-woo! Um, and, you know, my family's from the South. They did that migration that, that we did. And if you are familiar with that, uh, you, you should really look at Isabel Rickerson's book, um, The Warmth of Other Suns. She does a phenomenal job of sharing that journey of black families, the most under, understated migration in American history. Six million people without a leader. Anyway, my parents migrated from Louisiana. My father, uh, who went to the sixth grade, my mother uh, had a, actually had a, a chance to go to college. She had a scholarship, but she didn't go. She raised a family. And my father called himself an Asiatic black man for as long as I can remember, before black was beautiful and we was colored folks. My father said we were black, and he was real clear about that. He also knew that he didn't want to raise us in the South because he wasn't going to raise us to bow down. So one of the things I started to notice as a young child, I was always the kid, and I've always been the person that, you know, there was a little little kid in my, in my classroom that didn't have lunch. I was the one who shared my lunch. Oh, I don't, I don't want my, I don't need this sandwich. I'm not even hungry. That's who I was. I was the one who stood up for the kid that was uh, picked on or the kid that didn't have a friend. That's who I've always been from kindergarten. I've always been that person. But there was something I started to notice about my people. And, and be clear, I love my people. I love my people. And I started to see something happening with us that even as a child didn't make sense to me. I couldn't reconcile it. And the, and the thing that I saw was this kind of antagonism that was happening between us where if someone black was mad at someone else that was black, they would insult them. And when they insulted them, they would call them black first. You black fill in the blank. You black. And and as a child I, I was I struggled with that. I didn't understand. I said, well you are black. But you see, tacitly what we've agreed to is that if I call you black, that should injure you even more. It's to add emphasis to the insult. So when I call you black, I'm expecting that to hurt you. And that never made sense to me. You don't hear white people go, you white. <laughs> you know, that's 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 not what happens. So I think it started there, very young, with trying to understand why we hurt each other with each other, what that was about. And then later on, um, because this was long before, I had four degrees, three of them are advanced degrees. I'm not saying that to brag at all. I'm saying that to suggest that, you know, this was something that was confusing for me, and I was clearly confused. 
But part of what I, I, I learned is what was in lived experience with other black people. You know, like statements that I would hear people say, oh, she was a pretty girl, even though she was dark. You know, and oh, that was a good looking boy. You know, he was light skinned and had good hair. Right. And these were things that became, and again, when I say that, that is not to assault people because you, you, you there's brokenness there, but they don't understand that it's broken. So you can't fix what you don't understand. You can't fix it. And, and nobody ever kind of explained why why are we doing that? And instead, deep down, it, it, it kind of it chopped away at our sense of, of self. All of those years. Now you gotta remember something about you know slavery. <laughs> it's, it's so amazing to me. We're talking about over 300 years. That's longer than baseball. That's that's longer than you know, people, we say those words, but we don't understand what that means. 300 years of being treated like you were subhuman. Being told constantly that you're not okay, you're not whole. 300 years. What does that do to a people? And by the way, we can never talk about it. At what point do you remember in American history when we were able to actually talk about it? Somehow slavery ended and everything was fine. Somehow the playing field was leveled or something. At what point did we heal? So let me give you some math. <laughs> Tomorrow and the next day we're going to spend some time unpacking this. Um, but 300, 339 years at the very least of being sold, beaten, bred, mutilated, basically experimented on, raped, sold, lynched, lynched. So at what point, 339 years of trauma, no help. Now remember when someone tells this man who jumped the broom with his wife, as much of a wife as she could be, and they come in in the middle of the night and say to him, I want her because I got some male visitors. And I'm going to pass her around to them. Was there anybody? Was the Dr. Phil show up for them? No. So for 339 years of trauma, there was no help. Okay, then you got free. Okay, great. Now we're free. Any help then? Did you find it anywhere in the research books about, you know, we know you've been traumatized. We're going to get you some group therapy. We're going to do some couples counseling. We're going to deal with the children that were, you know, sold off. Any, any therapy. Okay, 339 years of trauma. No help. Freed. No help. Did the trauma continue? Um, we're talking about after, so in other words, after slavery ended, where did slavery go? Well, the first thing that happened is it didn't go. It's called peonage, the unlawful selling of people back into slavery, hence 12 years of slave. He wasn't the only one. So now you're, you're sold back into slavery, and they figure out we can't do that. Then they have something called black codes, which means that you might be free, but you better not come to the Bay Area. You better not go to Oregon. Well, can't you go north? Well, no, we created exclusionary laws to make sure you couldn't go. But aren't you free now? Okay, so 339 years of trauma, no help, free, more trauma. Because you got to remember all the lynchings occurred after slavery, not during. And by the way, they still occur. But here's what happens is we buy into a myth that somehow the playing field got level. And when did ever we have a chance as black people to have this conversation, to talk about why you might be broken and what that might look like, but instead you break our legs and then complain that we left. And when I say you, I'm talking about America. And I'm talking about those who suffered in the, in the Caribbean. And I'm talking about all of those who suffer the vestiges of such a horrific institution as chattel slavery. 
And I emphasize chattel because what happens to people around this, I know I'm answering this, no, wrong. This, this, this is what it takes. This is what it takes. You know, when people hear slavery, they go, you know, and some people are in here thinking, gosh, someone distract her so I can run. Um, you know, they're thinking slavery? Really? Are you? Come on now. Slavery? What What are you people, what excuses are you trying to find? You know, who are you trying to blame now? See, these are all, I, I, I'm dealing with that because I know it's going on in the psyche that people start kind of feeling that. But what people don't understand is that American chattel slavery differs from every form of slavery that preceded it. Because slavery is not a new institution. That's the other thing that people say. It's not new. Almost every institution that I know of, every country has had some form of indentured servitude or slavery. But American chattel slavery didn't look like the rest. It differed in the manner in which a person became a slave. It differed in the length of servitude. It differed in the treatment of those who were enslaved, and it differed in how they were perceived as human beings. Before the European slave trade began, most people became enslaved as a result of war. Two societies went to war, winners enslaved losers. However, Europeans systematically turned the capturing, shipping, selling, and breeding of other human beings into a business that would develop into the backbone of an entire economy. That's different. So when we take a look at slavery, we talk about this injury, post-traumatic slave syndrome, I'm going to give you some up close and personal real real estate so that you can understand that it's not, um, if, if you want to understand the etiology of some of the behavior that we see, we have to understand how far back we got to go. And then I'll talk about epigenetics so we can understand how it actually gets locked in the DNA. But before I go there, we Voices of my aunt. Teray Aset Akua Kiti Haru with the Temple of Het Haru, where our founder is Baba Saba Amari Sneferu, and you're listening to the Voices of My Art channel. Please subscribe to the channel and like. Also to our other channels, Mock Haru TV 314, as well as Paradigm Shift TV 314. Also, we have an excellent show on Paradigm Shift TV 314 that aired uh, last week about abortion. And it's historical because it's our first Queens debate on that station. And it features our very own Queen Hakika versus Queen Monique. So please family, take the time out and watch that debate. It was excellent. Ashe? Ashe. And when I say Ashe, it simply means that we agree and we're on the same accord. Ashe. Um, today's uh, show, we're going to talk about genocide, the demise of the Black race. And as I told you last week, this is part three. We have a Queen's perspective. But before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and do my normal Hesse, the chant. Pa netter, am pu pa ma ant, ank wais de jeb, ank unja seneb, uben nefa akar pa in bu haru ma ant. In English, that translates to how sweet is the truth, life, power, stability, life, prosperity, and health, rising always in divine excellence with my aunt every day, all day. Ashe. Ashe. 
also have a few announcements to make. On a Saturday, December the 19th at the Cardinals Care Park in St. Louis from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., our sister Shaka, uh, Queen Shaka from the Black Panthers, she is giving the ladies who we helped uh, on November 21st, she's giving the ladies a holiday celebration. So please come out and support her, support the ladies, show them some love. Uh, our sister circle is going to donate them socks, gloves, hats, and winter blankets. And so we're gathering that up today. Um, and also from today all the way up into Saturday, uh, December 12th, we're going to get those things together. And with the sister circle, we're going to donate those things so that we can help the ladies. Ashe? Ashe. And if you want to contact Queen Shaka for donations, just reach out to her on Facebook. Uh, her Facebook is Queen Shaka. You can get in contact with her. But please try to get those items to her so she can do inventory. And so by December the 12th on Saturday, she can let you know what's needed. Ashe? Ashe. And the second announcement I have is that we are also on the YouTube channel called uh, Street Talk STL, where it features our project that we did with the ladies for the uh, Temple of Heheru Queen Sister Circle Auxiliary. And so if you just go to YouTube and put in Street Talk STL, you can see our video. And I just want to say do I to our King Brother Usa who is a member of the Temple of Het Haru, and he took care of security for us that day, along with the Black Panthers, Queen Shaka, and our brother, uh, King Street Talk of STL, Ashe. Ashe. Now, without further ado, I have a very special guest, and I'm so honored that she could come on the platform. So at this time, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Hello, everyone. I am Nala. I, um, I'm Nala, and I'm on the journey. Of, I've been on the journey of spirituality and understanding for quite some time. I have studied many different ways of living in terms of being spiritual and in terms of being African American and Black, and I'm in a place at this very beautiful age of almost 60 and just resting right now in understanding and understanding, overstanding rather, that I am ultimately divine. I'm a master life coach. I'm a Reiki master. I'm a Karuni make Reiki master. I'm, wow. a, I'm a kinesiologist. I'm a reflexologist. Anything relating to healing the prana, healing the energy, healing thought therapeutics, I, I've done a lot of healing work from within. So I come to you very gracefully with humility um, to be on this platform. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled and I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm, I'm, I'm almost, my gratitude is overwhelming and I appreciate Ashe. you. Queen. Thank you. Ashe, Queen, you look beautiful. Thank you, you. you are just, um, when I talked to you on the phone, I felt your positive energy. I mean, you, I mean, when I talked to you on the phone, it was as if we known each other for like 10 or 15 years, right? So that that's divinity, that's divine intervention. Ashe? Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started, Queen, with the questions. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Why has black on black violence and murdering one another reached massive levels compared to 60 years or so ago within our own community. What do you think about that? I had a lot of thoughts about it. And like I typically approach most things, I wanna have full understanding of what it is that we are hoping to expose or to reveal or to bring to the forefront and in the hopes to expand and enlighten and evolve our understanding of a topic. And uh, Black on Black violence, us murdering one another has been, uh, you know, it, it touches my heart because we are a great people yes. because of 
our greatness, our divinity, our intelligence, our brilliance, our illumination, our light, our creativity, our, our variety. There is so much more to us than what we give and what we are receiving. And I just believe that what's plaguing us now is that we are unaware of who we are relative to our divinity. Yeah. We know the statistics about slavery. We know all of the stories. We have read those counts of historical data, which we know most of that is lies. We've read that. But you very seldom see our spiritual community uh, and uh, really in the forefront teaching us how to evolve out of the labels that we have been tagged to living. I was telling my granddaughter earlier, if I am brilliant, I don't have to try to prove my brilliance. It will show up. If I I'm change. illuminated, I don't have to prove that I'm illuminated. It will show up. So as I nervously approached the topic, and I wanted to make sure I did this topic great justice and the questions, which are very profound, I decided to define genocide. Okay, go right okay. ahead, Queen. Okay, so the word genocide was originally coined by a Polish-born U.S. jurist named Raphael Lemkin hmm. sometime back in Europe. And this is what he says about genocide. He says, generally speaking, genocide does not necessarily mean the immediate destruction of a nation, except when accomplished by mass killings of all members of a nation. It is intended rather to signify, this is key, a coordinated plan of different actions aimed at the destruction of essential foundations of life of national groups with the aim of annihilating the groups themselves. Mm. Purposeful, the gen black on black race annihilation is systemic purposeful killing and doing away with us. So yeah. much so that the energy of that, because I believe that we are first spirit, with the soul in a body. And this vehicle body is used to mobilize us and help us to transport awareness and knowledge and, and understanding that I, this is what's missing for me. Now, this is just my story. What's missing for me and understanding black on black crime is that there aren't enough of us speaking about how divine we are and yes. the energy of of, of devaluing and discrediting and destruction. We can choose or not to choose to flow in that energy. And I believe the black on black crime and, and violence and murdering is because the energy of what has happened to us is very yeah. prevalent and is permeating our system so strongly that it has taken on a life itself. So we are flowing in that energy, even if we did not want to, but it's like gravity, right? Gravity is here. If I didn't believe in gravity, the power, the power of belief in gravity is so strong that gravity is going to work. The power and belief of us being less than, mm -hmm. it, it works without it's our so conscious participation. And unless we understand that I can change my reality. I'm going to consider, I'm going to continue to see my sister who's beautiful and comes in a plethora of shades. I'm going to yes. see my brother who comes in many sizes and shapes and various skills and abilities. I'm going to see them as a threat to my own self when they are just mirrors of me. So yes. I think that we are walking in something that originally isn't even our energy. It's not our creation. It was created for us and is still cre being created for us every each and every day. Yes, yes, that's powerful, Queen. Powerful. Okay, let's move on to question um, two. Well, before we do that, I'm going to just share some other things with you. I was reading okay. 
I was reading, um, have you had or heard of, um, what's the attorney? His name is, oh my what Lord. What case was it? No, Ben Crump. Ben Crump, the civil yes. rights attorney, yes. Ben Crump. You know, he, he has a book, right? Open Season, The Legalized Genocide of Colored People. Mm, okay. Check it out. Great book, right? Great book. I will. He, he tells us the he tells us in the book that the United Nations in 1948 there was a convention uh, on the pre prevention of and punishment of the crime of genocide, and they define genocide. Another definition, which I think is very very strong, they de they define genocide as as this: it's a killing killing of members of a group causing serious bodily or mental harm deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated mm. to bring its physical destruction in whole or in part and imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, forcibly transferring the children of that group to another group. Genocide is a oh. systemic calculated thing. And the yes. United States has participated in willingly in this systemic annihilation of our people causing us to take on their it's, it's like a, I was I'm a veteran I'm a, I'm a, I'm a veteran right and and they used to play these mind games on us play these mind games and these mind tricks so there's a there have been a lot of mind games played on the black community to where now we're doing the work they don't have to do it we're yeah. doing it ourselves we're annihil we we are annihilating each other at record numbers right and the police have been given permission to continue to do that yes and so we as a people, I believe, continue to walk in that energy is because we are unaware, not all of us, some of us are unaware that the energy that's been transferred through generations upon generations, it was just that just us uh, was uh, 69 years, 69 years ago, back in 1951, with a group called the Civil Rights Congress petitioned got a petition together to charge the United States with the crime of genocide against people of color. That was just 69 years ago. And the energy is still just as strong today here in 2020. And I think being aware that you are better than what they are telling you are yes. is what's going to help us stop killing each other. Ashe, Ashe, very powerful queen. Do you have anything else to add for number one? No, no, no. Let's no. The, I, I'm following your lead. I'm following okay. your lead. But before we move on, you said that that book was by uh, attorney Ben Crump. Yes. And what's the name of it again? I'm going to write it down. It the 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 title is Open Season: okay. the, Le the Legalized Genocide of Colored People. The legalized genocide of colored people. Okay. Another thing that you might want to look up is this, this petition. The petition was written in 1951. A group of petitioners over 60, this is what they brought to, to the United Nations to charge the United States with intentionally committing the crime of genocide against colored people. And the petition is, is titled, We Charge Genocide. It's a really great, great read. And they have a mass of proof that has been committed against people of color by police force, just as it is today. 69, 1951 was just 69 years ago. Wow. I'm definitely going to look it up, Queen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now absolutely. let's uh, move on to question two. Why do some Black people bring up the premise that we continue to kill one another when it comes to the police killing us unfairly in the community, as if that makes it okay for police officers to murder us. I, I, once again, once again, I'm approaching this, this topic of black on black violence and murder from a spiritual perspective, because I, be, I believe that beyond my skin color, beyond my sex, beyond my manifestation, my manifested matter, that I am a divine being. I believe that that is just pure ignorance of the divinity of who we are. That's, that's the first thing. And the second thing is that you have to buy into the colonizing energetic system of belief. 
we're talking about systems. When we are moving people through systems, they either become, the system becomes a pendulum. And the pendulum of the system is just looking for adherence to agree to the power that keeps the pendulum moving back and forth. And the energy. And the energy of belief is what keeps a pendulum to be able to have its effect, whether it's good or bad or positive or negative on a group of people. When the energy and the spirit of hatred and devaluation has been pumped at you for 60, 70, 100, 200, 300, 400 years, even if you consciously believe that it's not in you, it is in you by transference of just the root energy of existence. It is in you. And you have to be willingly to eradicate that by loving. So I think Black people, you know, the white, you're lighter than me. You're darker than me. Your hair is nappy. Your hair is straight. That's been going on since my mother's my mother's 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 mother, right? Yeah. There was a preference. They chose the lighter skin house slave. They put them right, in. Right, they, right. they made the babies, right? The darker you are, the worse you got treated. So that's okay. the colonizer's energy. That's the colonizer's system of belief. We're just, we're just doing their work. And I believe that they think that it is okay if yes. you if they if they label you as black and uneducated, if they label you as black and poor, if they label you as a single mother on welfare and food stamps, and you're 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 not an asset to to our community, you're not an asset to our society, and you're violent and you're animalistic and you have bestiality. So I'm justified in saying, well, what the hell? We're doing it to ourselves. How can we be upset? We need to be damn pissed off. Excuse my French. No, we, need ahead, to, Queen. we need to be angry. Right you. you know, we need to be angry about that way in that in, in that in positive anger in a way to say, hey, listen, do you know that your ancestors created this planet that we're living on? Absolutely. That we are be, we're beyond what you have been bought into believing that you are. So right. once again, I believe that if we can get the masses to understand the divine essence of who they authentically are, their perception perception will change, their system of belief will adhere to a different pendulum swing. Right. And we have to start doing this with our, our younger generation. You Absolutely. See? And so once we introduce, teach, and edify that in them, and then when they get older, they can do the same for the next generation. Absolutely. And this is how we undo the destruction. Absolutely, absolutely. I um, I was uh, one of my mentees, young young brother, young brother, beautiful, brilliant young brother, and he was ha telling me that he was having some challenges with his spirituality. Should he do this or should he do that? And so I asked him. I said, just one question. Does it benefit you to know that you're a god, or does it benefit you to know that you came from a pharaoh, hmm. which has more power? See, because God every day can wake up and create, and, and, and not to dishonor the most high and the ancestors, that's not the point. The point is within us is a divine essence to be creators and creatresses. Yes. So yes. does it benefit me to know the energy? What's the, what, has the, what, what has the highest frequency? Knowing that I'm God or knowing that I came from a Pharaoh? Even knowing that I came from a pharaoh or a pharaohess or a queen that ruled the nation, you know, what if I came from uh, Queen um, Hashepsut? That's what I was told. I was Hashepsut. What if I, I hail from Queen Hashepsut? Hail her. Awesome, awesome, beautiful queen. But yeah. that still limits me to rise as high as she. But if I understood myself to come from the goddess, the divinity, the divine right, mother, right. I can, there are no limits. There are no boundaries. There's no ceilings. There's no walls. Right. There are no floors. And that empowers us to know that, hey, I can speak a thing 
and right. it can be so. I can think a thing and it can be so. If I raise up that power and I nurture it and feed it and love it, then my life can be what I say it will be. Right, or to either overstand and understand that you are God having a human experience. Absolutely. I Absolutely. Should. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to question three. Do you feel, yeah, this is a lot. <laughs> this <is> question three. <laughs> yes. Do you feel that religion may play a role in the way that Black people value or view themselves and others that look exactly like them? Well, let me tell you this. I, I, 30 plus years, you know, I study Catholicism, I study Islam, you know, I did the Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah. I studied Islam, I studied, I studied many different things. And so- Can I ask you how long you study Islam? I studied, I started Islam at 14. I went, I went up until I, I was like about 20 years old. Wow. I was raised Catholic. Right. So we did the Hail Marys, the full of grace. We did the Latin prayers right in the, in the Catholic school. You have to embrace in the private school in Jersey. You have to embrace the belief system. Right. Yes. A, a pendulum. If you want the benefits of this system, the pendulum of that system says you have to be an adherent to the system. You can't just receive the benefits and not adhere to it. So we had to adhere to Catholicism That's while amazing. I was being raised Islamic. Wow. Left all of that and became a dynamic Christian preacher, traveled the world 30 plus years. Wow. Preaching and teaching that you are a sinner and that your divinity was outside of you. Hear me, that, 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 that God, you had to go and please something that you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot, what's the word I'm looking for? You cannot concretely physically attest to is real in the way that we're being taught. I preached that for years. I preached that for years. I preached that for years. And so in doing that, I kept sending the people outward. Yes. There's no good thing in you. You right. have to go outward to yeah, find it. You're just a filthy rag. Right. Right. There's no, right. Okay. So does religion play a role? <laughs> yes religion does play okay let's talk about genocide in religion right you know you have the story of noah noah's ark right get all the animals right, right genocide right. a whole nation a whole nation of people genocide a whole nation of people slaughtered now let's we can make that spiritual we can make that uh, we can we can make that an advanced enlightenment uh understanding by saying what i i as the divine being my god self is aware that there are things i attach to and that i'm identified by that's causing me to be disconnected from my divinity so my divinity when i have given permission for my divinity to lead my life it's, it has to decide for me that is it better for me to stay in this manifested state of being disconnected from my divinity and losing all connection of who i am as a divine spirit and being as a divine goddess or do i or or or, or do or what's the best thing for me so it brings total destruction Yes, it brings total destruction. It's like the person being identified with the with the house. This is my house. The house is the identity. The car is the identity. The, the job title is the identity. The workflow is the identity. And through those identities, they're disconnected from the divinity. And so genocide happens within of those identities so the divinity can break forth like the beautiful seed that it is and blossom and become the beautiful planet, the sun, the moon, the stars, the universe, all of those good things. However, religion teaches us that no, that's not going to happen. And then you have to worship in a way so that maybe this God who's outside of you will be pleased with your offerings, will be pleased with your supplications, and you have to order your life in a way 
way that's so uh, pleasing to him that maybe I'll help you pay your rent, that maybe I'll give you a husband or a spouse, that maybe I'll bless your family. That's straight shenanigans. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, and I know this is not on here, but um, just because um, it was mentioned, uh, Queen Nyla, how did you pull yourself out of that mental health tragedy? Well, let me tell you, I was saying that I've always said I wanted to be the best version of myself that I could be. I've always said that I used to tell my mother different things like, you know, I'm going to be the first black president, female black president, and I'm going to get an island and move all of all of our black people off, off a, a, out of America and put them all on this island. And I used to have these grand, great stories. And this is five when you were a child. When I was a child. Now, okay. Yeah, Looking back on that now, you know, that had to be divine. It, it wasn't me. So I like to think that I didn't necessarily pull myself, myself. I believe that the most high, because mm -hmm. there was that connection and I fed it. The most high said to me one day in that, in that, in the Bible that you read every place you see the word God, put your name. Mm. And, and being a religious person, being a religious person, that was a challenge. So yes. as I began to study and, and, and dissect different words, like the word Lord, the word Lord means self-existent one. It's so beautiful. I began to see, wow, I am really God in body form. And, and, and I don't, I don't want to say the totality of the most high, because I want to make it clear that I'm in honor and respect of the most high and the ancestors and the sentient beings that help us stay together and keep us, keep us sane on this planet. But That's that good. it was a journey, you know, it was a journey. It was a journey coming out of that and realizing that this divinity that I was looking for, I already housed within Right, it, and it's and it says it in the text, right? The kingdom of God is within you. It says, "Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." It says, "Christ in you, which is a consciousness, right? An elevated consciousness, Christ in you, the hope of glory, right?" And then you know you have the word Ka and Ra and Prana and Chi and Ki, and all of those mean energy and spirit. You have the word Ruach, which means breath. You have Numa, which means breath. All of those things are just different names and labels for the name for the divine. Mm -hmm. And so through okay, that, sure. through that, uh, through study, through supplication, just the desire to be better. I, you know, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, I just the desire to be a better person, to contribute, yes. to contribute and to empower people versus sending them on a journey of being disempowered and always searching without when what they're looking for is within so I hear you, Queen. Am I correct in hearing that it was already in you? Oh. You just needed to, to have experiences and development and growth to um, activate. A defibrillator. I needed something to, to come and defibrillate. Yes. You know, you. to jumpstart that that connection, right? Absolutely. I, you know, scientifically, I was studying just, you know, about the cells. The cells have been created. The human cells have been created to be, uh, to have e live eternally. They have not been created to die. Yes. That's an essence of the divine. Uh, the consciousness, the consciousness is not a tangible thing, right? It's a part of a greater, it's a part of a greater existence, right? And so just that, that awareness, you know, your, your, uh, your, your gut, your gut feeling, your gut brain that originally scientifically was, is documented that your gut brain was your primary brain. The brain that we think is the brain up in the head is the brain that was used to identify food for the archaic Neanderthalish person. But your gut brain, which is connects you to the source, connects you to the divine, connects you to the most high, that was your primary brain because that was your intuitive brain. That's mm -hmm. the brain that's called the sun, the soul, the, the ciliac plexus. And so I just believed that it was there and I needed something to come along to kick me in the butt, to make life hard, to make me fall on my face and say, I need help. Yes. And I need help. I don't know what I'm doing. I need help. 
and help came. Ashe, Ashe. Mm -hmm. Okay, number four. This is kind of loaded. <laughs> I think that Queen, I think they're all loaded. I think they I think they're all loaded and I'm I'm feeling a little I say, I say you're doing a wonderful job, Queen. Bless so with number four, have you ever experienced a time that may have led you to cause destruction or violence to your own black folk, but you managed to de-escalate the situation before having to harm one another? Or if you had not experienced this and you were put in that same circumstance, how would you then handle the situation if you hadn't had a personal experience? I would say that when I was younger, I, I'm the oldest of 11 and I would convince my siblings and my younger siblings to do things that wasn't right for them to do. And, um, and then they would, example? okay, I was, I was, I was strung out on our, on our, on narcotics. Okay. Okay. I was strung out on the, you know, narcotics is, a, you know, I was right. in New Jersey strung out doing my little thing. And I would convince my younger brother to always come on, go with me, come on, go with me, come on, go with me. And then when he, when he became addicted and I became saved and clean and whole and healed, I had to go and get him yes. and care for him and rescue him. So how, how would I, how would you consider that de-escalate? I had to de help his mind to de-escalate from that place of inner destruction on the path that he was on. He was on a path of destruction. He was, he was on the path of of killing himself from within. And so I had to help him to no longer do that by educating him. First, I had to first apologize to him. Yes. When I found myself, right? I had to go back and be accountable. Because you introduced it to him. Right. I, I had to be accountable for yes. doing this. I had to be accountable for leading him astray. And I so I think accepting, I, I don't want to say I think, I know when we accept accountability and responsibility for introducing our people, our friends, our families to something that is knowingly destructive, the first thing that we have to do is say, hey, I'm sorry. Absolutely. We have to admit it and deal with it. Oh, I, I did that thing. I, we have to admit it and we have to deal with it. And so sure. I helped him out and he's today very successful. He's awesome. He's wonderful. If we has a beautiful family and That's so amazing. on and so forth. And so, yeah, it was, it was, it was a journey. It was really a journey. Mm -hmm. We'll do it to you queen for recognizing that. Cause a lot of us are still caught up in that. No, I think that's really important. I was talking to my granddaughter every every time, every time, every time source, every time the most high uh, uh, enlightens me or brings me to a place of awareness. I'm very humble about it and very grateful. And I share it. I share it with my kids, my grandkids. You know, I share it with my family. And I was telling her about you today and I was telling her about do I? I was telling her, I said, I'm going to be doing this uh, radio interview. And, and, um, and I was telling her about this specific question. And she said, well, if people have their own will, they still have to choose to follow or not follow. I said, this is true. However, if I am aware that I am taking you across the street and across the street is something that can destroy you, yes, you're choosing to follow. If I'm a person of persuasion and influence and I can convince yes. you to follow me across the street and you go trusting me because yes. of who I am, even though you had a choice in it, I have to be accountable for the result of the destruction. Yes. I'm not accountable for you saying yes, because you still have to make your own choice. But I have, and we lack in our community, sometimes accountability and responsibility. Sometimes we have to say it to our children. There's some things you're going through that have nothing to do with you. That's just my journey, my stuff. I made some decisions and the energy yes. of my decision. You're living through it. There were things that happened. And so she said, well, I didn't think about it that way. I said, yeah, if I took you across the street and you fell and hurt yourself you would say grandma 
I, I followed you and right. I got hurt. Mm -hmm. And then if I said, well, you shouldn't have followed me. And you would say, but grandma, I followed you. Right, because I trusted you. <laughs> exactly. And so when people right. trust us with their life, with their soul, with their resources and their assets, and we stop being accountable and responsible for the end of, for the result of the following, then we're no different than the colonizers. We're Absolutely. no different. We're no different than the people that's destroying us. We're no different. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I totally agree. Totally mm -hmm. agree. That was powerful, Queen. Um, awesome. Thank I you so it. much I for that. Um, okay, so we're now at question five, our final question. <laughs> As a collective community, what strategies or mechanisms should we put in place to end to end violence and murder against one another in our society? I, I feel like that we. Uh, I feel like I kind of rushed you through these answers. Like I'm trying to hurry up and get done. No, um, you take your time. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Um, like I said, there's no there's no time on. Um, educating, edifying, Ashe, Ashe, empowering, Ashe. and enlightening. So Ashe, Ashe. take your time. I, I think that once again, I think that for me, it all it all boils down to education. And does education have to be in school? It can be, but I homeschool my children, so that's not my story, right? Uh, yeah. does, does education, but education and awareness has to happen. Um, we have statistics, we have a data, we already have proof. We have proof from 1951, we have proof from 1867, we have proof from 1701, we have proof from 2020, 2019, 2016. We have proof, we have tangible, accessible matter that's manifested that says we are being destroyed. Yes. I don't, I don't have to keep repeating the statistics. A apparently being aware that I am African, African-American or black or colored or whatever label that's chosen to identify me isn't the only thing that is that's saving me. It's not saving me. A knowing that we were allegedly, which I don't, Allegedly, knowing that slavery was what it was, what that that they're telling us. Allegedly, knowing about Jim Crow, knowing about the Ku Klux Klan, knowing about Amendment Thirteen that yeah. gave that legalized slavery, right? It legalized. We we're gonna free you, but then we're going to put this loophole in the Thirteenth Amendment that says if you commit a crime, we can enslave you. But then we're gonna write laws like the Black Codes that's going yeah. to force you to commit a crime so that we can enslave you yet again yet again mm -hmm. so so knowing that i need to know something different and i believe the different thing that i need to know that might be the bridge or that might be the springboard but then what's higher than that and i believe it all goes back to overstanding that we are essence or co-creatresses or co-beings with the most high i believe it's an untapped awareness about who we are and the power to change our reality and the lives of people around us by being in touch with energies that are that's not bound by this plane's existence. I so believe in that principle. I believe in educating the masses on you are God and beside you, queen. There's not another queen like you. Yes. I am Nala. And besides Queen Nala, there isn't another like me. And what yes. Queen Nala can do and what you can do, Queen, there isn't another person that can do that. They may be able to do similar, similar right. things something like you but to put your spin on it and your touch on it and your essence on it and your creativity on it and your intuitiveness on it it's just you and right. beside you 
doing that, there isn't another. How many of our children, if we could tell them that you are God breathe and beside yes. you, there's not another. There's not another one coming like you. There's not another one coming with your hair, your eyes, your DNA, yes. your fingers, your toes, your lips, your mouth. And there are divine gifts that's within you that'll yes. blow even your own mind. And I think it's going to take something like that. Right, right. To, to defibrillate us out of being focused on how bad we're being treated yes right we know that we're being treated bad right does the energy feel good once again to know that i may hail from Hashepsut, or does the energy feel higher to know that i am goddess i am goddess and beside me there is a not there's not another and I think that's what it's going to take, or one of, not the only thing. I think that's right. what it's going to take. Some of right. It. And I also think with that being said, it is very important that our queens, when we have babies inside of us, this is where the teaching begins. Yes. So if the mother has that, that positive divinity and that energy, it's already seeping into that child, even before the child physically hits the earth. Yes. Right. And then yes. when that child comes out and the mom and the dad and the siblings are all together working. Yes. yes. To yes. continue to every day instill yes. that. That's yeah. what it's going to take. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I'd like to study the, the, the soul system, the soul, the soul points, you know, they, in Hinduism, they call them chakras and, you know, they call them uh, uh, psychic energy centers within the first chakra, which is your root, your root soul point, right? It is your foundation. The residence of it is from conception to seven, maybe about 12 years of old, 12 years of age. And what comes through that is the energetic belief, emotional system of your parents, so on and so forth, on down the line. So if my mother, like you were just saying, if my mother was lacking confidence, yes. then I am going to magnetize to me as a fetus anything that says I don't have confidence. If my mother is lacking a high, if her self-esteem is low, then I'm going to have the energy and the emotive, the emotive energy of low self-esteem, right? And yeah. so this is where uh, I, I don't have I don't have active conscious aware participation in my foundation. The root chakra says what that I am here in the earth and why the root chakra says I have security. I'm secure. I'm safe. My foundation is 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 comforting for me and is and is safe for me to be on. But we know a lot of our African our black babies, our colored babies are not coming through the womb in those types of systems. They're coming through broken emotional systems, right? And so when those energies are there, we're going to magnetize that. So I, I believe that, like you said, if the mother and the father, they're speaking life, right? Then the baby is going to speak speak life and feel life and feel the confidence and the energy and the esteem that it needs to be great. My grandson, he's three and he walks around and says, I'm King Kair. Yeah, I love I'm, it. I love I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I'm King Kair and I'm the greatest. I am King Kair and I am the greatest. That's what I'm talking about. That's what that, I'm talking about. That part. Right. That part right there. Right. Yes. See, all my great, all my my great niece and my great nephews, they all have king queendom names. Yes. You see? Yes. And every day that TT, that GTT is in their presence. I'm constantly reminding them who they are. Yes. Now yes. at the age yes. of three, at the age yes. of eight at the age of 10, 
Okay. Yes. Because then yes. you are going to define yourself, have the confidence that you need, yes. Yes. have your divinity, yes. right? Yes. And not allow yourself to get caught up in a lot of the destruction that we face right. on a day to day. That's right. If you think about it also too, here's, a, here's a, a, another way to, to dovetail on what you're saying. If I say I am ugly, right? Right. It's easy for people to hear that, right? Yes. It's, it's easy for people to hear me degrade myself, right? And if I do that, then I will invite degrading. I will invite whatever comments that will come from that. Whatever uh, behavior. Yes. Right. I will. Right. If, if I, if I don't feel like I'm worth a good man. I'm going to what? I'm going to invite the man in my life that's not going to be well for me, right? Yeah. But Absolutely. if I say I am God, it's startling. Why is that so startling? Just like I can draw to me a, 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 a people that, that aren't for my benefit, right? I'll magnetize those people to me. I can, I'll magnetize the essence of the most high if I identify with that essence. Yeah. So, so while, I, while I am queen and my, my grandson is king and my daughter, is, she's a queen and, and so on and so forth, I also like to instill in them that identify yourself as, as the most high in body form, not discounting your need and your, your need to stay connected to the most high. You right. have to stay connected. I don't want to send that message. That's not the message that I'm sending, but we're talking about pulling to us what is typically not expected. It's expected for me to go get a husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go. It's, it's expected. It's expected certain things, but but those languages, the language, the divine language, the, the language of the of the of divinity, is not a language that we are not all of us. That some of us are not accustomed to using on a daily basis because we have been programmed and conditioned to see and say and believe that that's outside of us. I say. Mm -hmm. We also have been conditioned that if we do say that, then we're being um, blasphemous, overly conceited, or we're being out of order. Or in yes, a yes. And in Christianity, you're a straight up blasphemer. Yes. You're bla right. You're blasphemous. Right. You're being out of order, or you're being a narcissist. Right. Or, right, you know, the, the narcissist thing, the, the, you're being a narcissist. Right, so you're destroying your salvation. Yes. <laughs> I say. Yes. I say. And so I believe, I, believe that the, I believe that the Most High wants us to acknowledge that we are a part of divinity, that we are, can, look at the ancestors. We talk to the ancestors, right? We have our ancestral, we have our ancestral altars. We bring offerings to the altar and the ancestors, they respond. Why? Because we're pulling on their energy. We're not pulling on their physical, tangible, tangible manifestation. We're pulling on the energy of what that ancestor represented. Absolutely. What's the difference of pulling on the energy of the most high? Right. In conjunction with pulling on the answer, there's no different. And right. so I think I think the language teaching, uh, knowing how to think like a, a king, a queen that's flowing in the energy of, of the most high, that takes some training, that takes some doing, that takes some practicing, that takes some eradicating, you know, what part of the pendulum swing, you know, everything is a pendulum politics. Is a, is a pendulum, you know, systems of financial systems are pendulums. What, what pendulum do you want to adhere to? I want to adhere to the pendulum that says, I am co-creatress with the most high. I am co-goddess with the most high. That's the pendulum swing that I want to adhere to. That's the power that I want flowing through me and in me and in my life. Yes. in the lives of my family member. So collectively as a community, I think it's, it takes some overstanding and understanding that process of, of mental, spiritual, psychological change because energy is real. Energy, right. energy is real. Right, and I also think we can do a better job when um, our children don't have that in their home. Yes. And if you have it to share, you must be willing to open up your heart and share. 
with others. We, we've yeah. lost that and we got to get it back. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, uh, when you look up the word segregation, right, that means purposely to separate for the purpose of dividing. Mm. I mean, you know, they didn't want us to have Black Wall Street. No. Right. They didn't want us to be educated. Right. We're separate, but equal. No, you the, the, the whole the. And so, and, 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 and you can see we're, we're, we're doing it to ourselves, right. right? I have a house, you have a house, my sister has a house. Why can't we all be in one big giant house, 5,000 square feet? We collectively economically change the economics of our family. Yes, absolutely. Right? right, if I'm growing, I'm evolving, I'm expanding, I'm changing, my inner awareness is growing out here, then I need to educate and share that with those who don't have access to that or who's locked into the system of belief that I'm nothing. Right, and that's an awesome uh, economic plan that we must adhere to. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So I believe in enlightenment. I believe in ascension. I believe in education. I believe in understanding and, and awareness. And, uh, you know, I, I read a whole lot of stuff as you can probably tell. But it's nothing like knowing that I am a part of the most high, that I am breathing in the essence of the most high. Ashe, Queen. Ashe. Dua for your presence, for your Ashe. positive energy. Um, I am honored. I am honored that you were able to come on the voices of my eye and grace our audience. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. With your wisdom. Do I to you? Thank you very much. Do but I. before before we leave, uh, Queen uh, Nyla, is there anything else that you want to close out with for the audience? Anything at all? I would just say, if you you that are listening and you that are participating and on the journey of self evolution knowing who you are and where you come from, whether it's ancient Kemet, whether it's Asia, know that your origin, it begins with the most high. Find a way, find a teacher, find a coach, find someone that can help defibrillate that connection within yourself and within your being so that the pendulum swings of racism and destruction of our people you don't have to you don't have to give up your power your life power your vitality to that because that's all it's looking for what can i do to put in place this system so the system will run itself and we have systems that's running themselves because we adhere to the power of that system by declaring that system to be true. What yes. is true is that you are a spirit with a soul in this vehicle called the body. Powerful. Powerful, Queen. Powerful. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. So I'm going to um, just do a few um, shout outs. I want to say dua to you, Queen, again, for coming on. Uh, I hope you come and visit us more often. Because <laughs> I do have a lot of topics uh, coming up that I think you will be awesome for. So just, okay. just keep that in mind. <laughs> hey, you, hey, listen, you must, you my sister, you know my number. Just, you know, ring, ring. <laughs> Okay. So I want to say do I uh, to our Baba Saba Amari Sneferu do I, do I, do I. of the Temple of Heferu. I want to say do I for him connecting us. Um, I was just so, like I said, when I first talked to you, um, I was enlightened just to hear you speak about positive energy. And I tell you, I feel that us queens, we all we got. So we got to stick together. Ashe? Uh, that part. No, we, we want to say <laughs> that part. Ashe <laughs> and that part. Yes. Right, right. And I want to say do I to our uh, king, Saba Pianki, yeah. Matula Nefer Umun Ra, who is the creator of all of our channels. 
I want to say do it to the um, my parents, Roy and Princella Small, for my existence yes. and to the universe. Yeah, I want to say do it to our elders of the Temple of Het Haru, which is Elder Rini Ankh and our Queen Elder Regina Dennis Nana. I want to say do it to all of our children, our listeners, our donors, our supporters, our fellow Black organizations and families in the community. Yes. And so um, please continue to watch the voices of my art channel along with our My Karoo TV 314 and Paradigm Shift 314. And so we hope that we continue to educate, edify, empower, and enlighten. Ashe. Ashe. Peace. Peace.